Hey guys, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. I just received the latest um, set of markers from Artix. It's the uh, 90 set of the Oros markers, and I thought I would unbox it before I review it because people like to see the unboxings. <laughs> um, so it's all shrink wrapped here. These are not yet available for purchase, and if you follow the Artix um, brand, they release their markers a couple different ways, but they make it so that you can collect, make your collection over time without duplicates, which I really like. So if you purchase the Artix Oros 80 set in the skin tone set of 36, and this would be no duplicates except for a couple colorless blenders. Um, and they also did their original version of their markers, which were the ELP markers. They, um, they did the same thing with those markers, but they also released color family packs. So um, you could either build it up by getting the 80, the 90, and the skin tones, or you could get the um, each of the color family packs plus the skin tones and get all the colors. So um, they give you a couple ways to do it. I don't know if they're going to come out with the color family packs for these, but they did say that they're going to come out with um, replaceable nibs and refills. So that will be uh, that will be nice when that happens. It seems like they're really investing a lot into their marker line. So this uh, this paperwork also came in the other sets that I reviewed. So I will link to that re review in the video description so you can find that. Um, and I know I didn't show really show this stuff too much. It comes with a little postcard that you could mail to a friend. It's just it's just kind of like a little freebie. I really like this. It comes with a uh, chart. And you know what I think I would do this time that I didn't do last time and I kind of regret because I, I filled it in? I think I will photocopy this on the cardstock I usually use because I found that their swatch paper doesn't look, the markers look differently on their paper than they do on the paper I usually use. The stuff looks lighter on their paper because of the coating on it. It does respond a little bit more like their marker pad, but um, I think because they probably were putting it on a paper that would print in color really well, they went with a coated paper, and um, it just behaves differently than the paper that I usually use, so I think I'll probably photocopy this onto some Nina cardstock or some marker paper just so I have a more uh, accurate swatch. I won't have to swatch it twice, I can just swatch it once on paper, because what I did was I ended up swatching it again on my um, my paper when I when I reviewed their other markers. There's a customer service card, so um, uh, just says like how to reach them if you have any questions or concerns. And we've got a pack of stickers. So I have a feeling that these are marketed to uh, younger artists, maybe just getting started in markers, um, maybe like uh, high school, maybe you know more budget conscious because these are significantly cheaper than Copics, and they do have a brush tip. So I noticed like they just seem to have a really young, playful vibe with their products. So these here, which you may remember from my other review, um, what I'll probably end up doing is uh, like a demonstration with these since I've already reviewed the markers. Um, these are these little stands that will hook to the marker cases. So let me just show you that. Uh, so what you do is you take two pieces, and I don't know why they do. They 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 um, you have a blue stand, a yellow stand, and then a blue and yellow stand. I'm not. There's probably a reason why, and I just don't know what it is. But uh, I noticed that same thing with my other set. So what I'm probably going to do is actually um, uh, switch it up so that <laughs> so that my stand legs will match. Okay, and so this I didn't realize when I first used them. But what you want to do is actually make sure when you put this on that you get the um, that the little legs. There's like a little. Um, little notch in there. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's a little notch in there and it needs to um, it needs to really get in there so it'll actually pop the two markers that are in those slots out a little bit but if you don't get that notch in there it's going to want to tip on you so the markers will want to tip forward so just make sure you get the little notch in there and then you can organize your markers and they'll stay in order because of the little slots. And so there are three of those stands in total and we've also got three of these little cubes in total. And of course, if you wanted to do something different, like maybe you're handy and you want to make like a wooden frame, you could put these in a wooden frame. That's honestly what I think I might do is just uh, have my husband make me a box that will fit all the little trays, figure out how they'll go together well, and then just put them in like that so I have them in the order that I want them to be in. Uh, but you don't have to do that. That's just what I would do. And then they come with a carry bag. Let's take a look here. Let's see. Oh, it's got, what is this? I don't know what that is. Hopefully there's enough room to easily 
put the markers in this bag. The bag for the 80 set was really tight and it was very frustrating. So I'm gonna see. This one, I think this one's gonna be tight too. Oh, it can unsnap the bag. Oh, you know what? Oh, they listened. Yes, they listened. Cause the last bag they had for the 80 set, the, um, had a zipper top and you couldn't access all your markers when you had the stands in there. You could store them all in there, but you just couldn't really access them. So instead of doing the zipper this time, they, um, oh, I, you know what? I think they read out, I think they watch our reviews. I think that's awesome. Instead of that, you can snap in this cover. This is so much better. Let's see, would you go? I think I would go this way. Oh, this is worlds better. So you can actually keep your markers in here and it's not gonna be a struggle to use them in the case. All right, never mind. I would keep it in the bag because that's gonna be easy to use. I'm so glad because I was I was so I was so bummed because I liked the bag, but it was just too frustrating to get the markers out of. That is great. I love that. There's a pocket in there to put your stands in. And there's a strap. Let's just put our, let's put those right in there. I love this. I want my bag. I like marker bags actually. And I like them to actually be handy for storing for storing and using my markers. Cause a lot of times I'm gonna grab a set of markers and I'm gonna go, you know, maybe sit in the living room or sit on the deck or something and, and color. So, and then you would just arrange your markers the way you want in the little rack there. Look at that. How easy is that? So all the markers are right here. Actually, the boxes are nice too. I saved my other boxes. So there's 90 of these puppies in here. I saved the boxes because for storage, I liked how I could have them all flat. So that worked out really well. These are nice sturdy boxes. They're kind of cute. So it would be nice to repurpose them for something if you didn't want to keep your markers in there because actually the bag here, I wish we could order another bag like this. I wonder if I could do something to my original Artix bag to make it more like this. Uh, thank you Artix for listening to my last review if that's what made you make, make this change because this is so much better. Um, I'm gonna have to think on that because that makes it so handy. And I love that everything's gonna stay in order because other marker bags, generally, you know, the markers slip around because it's just a big op open void there that you put your markers in. But I like how that's gonna keep them in order. So nice, nice, nice. So I have reviewed the product before. Like I said, I just like to look at the differences between the sets. And these will be the same colors that were in the Arctic's Alp set of 90. So they are keeping, um, continue, uh, what do you call it, continuity between the lines of markers, which I really like. Um, so that way, if you like a, you know, if you like to have a, both options, if you want to have a brush and a bullet tip, you could have both sets and you know your number, your colors are going to match, which, um, which I did cross reference. I did check and then the colors did match the previous markers. So that, that's good. There's, there's a good consistency between the lines of markers. So, you know, you can start out with one, you can branch out to the other or, you know, get both if you like to have that variety. But there's the unboxing. Um, I mean, I'm gonna probably get pretty particular and put these markers in a particular order, but I think that would be a little mind numbing to watch. So I won't make you sit through that. Look at that. They actually go in there really easy if you're not particular about order. You just plop them right in there and they get right in the stands. This bag is so much better. <laughs> so much better. Oh man. I also like it when marker companies include a swatch because that way you can fill in your swatch and you can make sure you're not missing any and you don't have duplicates. So that's another uh, another awesome thing about having a swatch included. Otherwise, you know, you're just numbering it out and you're filling it in and you might, you know, you might not realize that you're missing something. So having a swatch is really, is really handy. And I do swatch my markers. I don't swatch everything. I usually only swatch um, markers, watercolors, and anything that you can't tell for sure what color it is from looking at the media. And that's what I find with um, with watercolors and with markers. With, with um, like, cause if you look at the nib, they look a lot darker than what they actually come up because they're a transparent medium. So I swatch transparent mediums, but color pencils, unless I'm doing a review, I don't swatch them. And I never, I don't refer to a swatch either. <laughs> I just go with, I look at the lead and that's how I, that's how I roll. Oh, it's kind of pretty to see how the colors, like what colors end up next to each other just because of the look of the draw. That's kind of a fun thing to do too. Just pick out a couple of colors and say you're going to base your design around that. So there, that's cute. Look at that. All right. So there is an unboxing of the Artix bag. I don't know if I showed you the Artix markers. All beauty lasts forever. Full of interesting imagination. Sometimes I think
think things get lost in translation with certain products. Cute. That's got a little plaque on it like the other ones did. I like this so much better. And I know some people might not like the way that looks, but I am more interested in the way it functions than the way it looks. Oh, I forgot one. Where, where do you go, dude? Oh, right there. Somebody, I'm sure somebody was freaking out watching that. Like, Lindsay, you're missing one. <laughs> and this is a little strap. And that's how that hooks on. Nice. It feels it feels really good quality too. This, the, I mean, this feels like um, feed bag material, but the strap feels really, really nice quality. Nice. I probably would say it'd be better if the if the, the straps were on the end, just because it would be better balanced as far as carrying it. But I'm not complaining for and it. Gosh, it would have been just as easy. So next time, Artix, when you're making your next bag, put the little rings on the end because it would be the same. It wouldn't cost any more to put them on the end. It wouldn't be any different material. You just need to sew that here instead of there. Of course, you give up the little the the the, uh, the little snaps here. But I don't think anyone's going to be using those snaps if they're full of markers because you really can't. You it's it's uh the only thing the snaps you're only going to use to snap those if you don't have your markers in it. Well, I guess you could, but I don't know. I don't think I would. I mean, you can. I don't think it looks great. Maybe you do that so you don't. Well, I guess you could do that so they don't fall out, but I don't think they're going to fall out if you're carrying them around. So I would definitely have those on the ends, but other than that, I think it's cute. So there's the unboxing of the new Arctic Oro set of 90. Okay, future Lindsay is here. <laughs> Past Lindsay did the unboxing. And uh, I just want to give an overview about this set here, give you some thoughts. Uh, it just got released, so I did want to make sure I had this video out because I know some people were curious about these new Arctic markers and um, the new set that they've released. Now, this is a supplemental set. And what I mean by that is if you're brand new to markers and you're like, gee, I like to start some brush with some brush markers and, um, you know, uh, uh, just get one kit that will get me going. This isn't the one you want to get. If if you love the look of these markers and you want to um, get a more all-around set, I would recommend you go with like their 80 set because their 80 set has um, a lot more, they have some, some pastels, some deep tones, and some mid-tones. And um, other than grays, it's a pretty all-around set. So um, if you're looking for one out of these uh, three sets that, re that they've released in the dual tip with a brush end markers, I definitely would start off with the 80 set just because you're going to have a, I think, a more useful variety uh, for a beginner. But let's say you already have a set of markers and um, and you want something that's got more pastels, maybe some more deep tones. This set might be for you. Honestly, if I think what I would recommend um, is so you don't get duplicates would just be sticking with the Artix markers and getting the 80 set the 36 skin tone set and then the 90 set, or maybe not even getting the 36 skin tone set because you have a lot of skin tones here and here. Um, I think if you had the the original 80 set and you combine the skin tones here, here with the, the skin tones here, I think you'd have a better, you've had a better better range. There's not a lot of mid tones here, so I think it might be a little frustrating to get this and, and use it for skin tones because you've got darks and you've got lights, but not a lot in the middle. But here, you've got a few shades that are mid-tones that you could really work in. And um, I think you just have a better a better range. I mean, you could even overlap some of the pinks and some of the light purples and or some of the purples over here and the greens and, you, and the grays and really get, um, you know, a good look. But they do have, they do have a skin tone set. So that's also a good option if you just want skin tones. But just talking about the 90 set, something else I noticed, which I noticed in the skin tone set, with their skin tone set by name, it matched Copic colors exactly. So if you needed refill inks, you could just go by the name on the swatch card. That's why it's important to keep the swatch cards with these Artix Alp sets because it seems like number wise, with the exception of the skin tone, number wise, they match both the Shinhan uh, refill inks and the Art and Fly refill inks, but by name they match Copic. And I did actually, for some of the Copic markers that I had, I um, just swatched them out next to the same name in the um, in the Alp version. So some were 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 spot on, some were off. Like Mauve Shadow, not a match to Copic's Mauve Shadow, um, but the Cool Shadow was a match to the Cool Green, very very close. Frost was a good match. Um, Mint was a good match. 
Putty was a pretty good match. Um, Lime was a pretty good match. I mean, not perfect, but pretty good. I definitely think you could get by with getting that reinker. Um, Mignon... I can't, I can't say this. It's a toughie. Um, Mignonette, I think. Uh, they were a good match. Now, Canary Yellow, I didn't think... They, they're, they're close, not perfect. Um, yellow and Lemon were not good matches. I feel like they're... They, on Arctic, both their Yellow and their Lemon are quite uh, warm, actually and where Copic Lemon is like a light version of Copic Yellow. They're both cool tones, so those were not matches. But um, but for a lot of the, the colors by name, they were good matches for Copic, so I thought that was, I thought, just another option. Now, Arctic says that they are looking into either um, offering open stock markers or refills, one or the other. Um, so that's good. I guess if they if they do if they do refills, they'll also do nibs. But I did find out that the um, Altenew, because the Altenew markers use the same body as the Artix Oros and the Artix Alp markers, and they offer a beautiful brush nib, which are, I think you get three for about six dollars and they are the more like Copic, that flexible uh, foam rubber nib versus the fiber nib that are in the Artix markers. So it would be an upgrade. Now these nibs are uh, reversible, like the Ohuhu nibs. Actually, I find these nibs to be identical to the Ohuhu. I did find some of the markers felt a little dry, but what I think the deal was, was maybe the nib wasn't touching the pad and the inside very well, because on the one marker that uh, I was coloring, I'll show you the artwork here, I was, um, and don't just pull these out willy-nilly, I was just showing you that they were double-ended. I don't want you to go ripping them out and moving them all around. That's going to shorten the life of your nib. Um, but when I was coloring, and I have a time lapse of this on my channel, by the time this review goes out, there'll be a time lapse of this on my channel. When I was coloring the really pale pink, I was like, oh no, this feels dry. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and I hadn't used it, used that color very much except to just do my swatch. So I was kind of like, ugh. Um, but so I pulled the nib out to look at it. And then I put the nib back in. I flipped it around and it kept coloring fine after that. So I don't know if maybe it just wasn't touching the pad in the middle. One other thing I found in three of the markers in this 90 set, and it could be that I think I have one of the first ones that rolled off the conveyor belt at the factory because it came to me. I um, Full disclosure, these were sent to me for free to review from the Artix company. And uh, they sent this directly from Hong Kong. So, um, it, I, you know, I might have had one of the first ones to roll off the to roll off the conveyor belt. Uh, but I'm going to try to figure out what color it was. I think it was six, vivid pink, um, which is a very, very bright pink. It's over here with my purple, purpley pinks. Um, like the tip on <clears throat> this feels like it's in too far. Maybe they had to do that to make sure it contacted the, uh, the pad on the inside. But let's just grab another one at random. And see, that's how that one at random is. Let me zoom in a little bit. And see, this is what I'm used to. I'm used to this on like my Uhuhu markers and <clears throat> any other marker I have that has that similar that similar tip. And I know it's not that far off, so it doesn't seem that big of a deal, but it does feel differently when you're coloring with it. It feels like you don't have enough enough tip out. It feels like your the edge of your marker might hit the paper, you know, if you're going on the side for a side stroke. So I would like to be pulled out that to be out a little bit more. I tried pulling it out, but I couldn't get it to budge. So and I was afraid of damaging the nib. So I didn't um well I can I don't ha I had a pair of those tweezers for like replacing nibs, but I think when I had them I wasn't sure what they were for. I think they made up come with my Copics. Um yeah I just can't Oh, did I? Yeah, okay, I got it out a little bit. Um, so I'm just going to... Oh, I feel like I have it out a little bit, a bit too far. Okay, so now we have that one. So it's not a big deal, but I just don't like to... I'm ki I am kind of baby my markers. So that could be why my markers last so well, and, and the fact that I have so many markers that I don't need to overuse any of them. But um, I do baby my markers, especially the ones with the fiber nibs, because um, they're not going to be as durable as the foam rubber nibs. That's just... That's just the nature of the beast and that's why these markers are under a dollar a piece versus you know three to eight dollars a piece so like the Blick Studio ones you're gonna pay three bucks for one of those markers uh, but it's got a better nib most of the money in that marker is in the nib so um so these are these are a more than fair price for these these are running oh I took an I made a note these are on sale for like 85 bucks right now is that right no that's not right I did my math wrong I think the price, I think their regular price is like $86.99 and there's like an $8 off coupon. So it should be like $78 right now um, because they're brand new. That's why I wanted to get the video out in case anyone was interested. They could grab them while the coupons were going. Hopefully they'll still be on. I have no idea. I don't have that 
that information, but versus their old style, which is the ELP markers, which have the uh, the chisel and the bullet nib. I have a full review on these Oros markers too, by the way. I'll try to remember to link that down below so you can take a look, so I don't just want to repeat myself. Um, versus the ELP marker that is um, a, a chisel and a bullet, the Oros is a chisel and a brush. So this is something else I want to show you. I'm going to flip this over just so I have a little bit of a blank slate. Oh, that's kind of pretty. By the way, I, I photocopied my my swatch on Nina Classic Crest paper because that's what I usually use. So I did that so it would be easier to see. That doesn't help you one single bit. I'm just going to grab the box of one of these. I think it's one of my... Uh, flip it over. It's the 36 skin tone box. I, was, I had them all out earlier today. Um, so the body is slightly different for the Oros marker just because it's got two larger capacity nib holders on the end. They're the same size nib holders, so the reason I mention this is because if you have the Artix Alp markers and you're like, oh gee, I never use that chisel nib, I like having the bullet tip, but I wish I had a bullet and a brush tip, buy some Alta new brush nibs and stick them in your uh, your Alp markers. They're, they're cheaper markers, They or they cost less because they don't have that more expensive brush tip on them. So if you already have these, or maybe you, you know you want a brush and a bullet, you could upgrade the chisel nib to a brush nib that's a higher quality than the brush nib you get in there if you get the Alta new ones. Um, I wanna make sure that your products that you already have, if, if what you already have can be useful, I would rather you do that than go and buy something else, even though I do get a small commission if you purchase through one of my affiliate links. I would prefer, if you have something that's already worked, that you use what you have and you make that work. Now look at this. Is it the same two colors? These are the same two colors. The ink looks a little different. I've got to swatch these now. <laughs> I bet they're, they should be the same, but the nibs look, the colors look different. Oh, they look the same on paper though. Maybe they use, maybe the, um, you know what? I'm wondering if the chisel nib might be slightly different. The chisel nib on the Alp looks like it's a little bit fatter. Looks like the, whatever the material of the chisel nib might have like a, uh, like a slightly yellowish tone to it. I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're the same type of nib. They just, it just looks like they're, they're slightly different. But the color coming out of them, I perfectly match. I did compare my swatches because I thought that some of the colors in here, because this is a supplemental set. This is to like, um, bridge the gap from the other colors that didn't come in the um, in the 80 set. This is basically filling in with the other colors that are available. I feel like that's capping on that. I think I've done that on the wrong end. Um, it shouldn't make a difference, but it seems to. Uh, these, oh, by the way, the, the caps are kind of hard to get off. So if you have arthritis, I would not recommend these because of that. So now these, these are easy. It's funny, the, the Alps, the caps are easy. So I'm wondering if maybe they'll get easier with time. I feel like I should just uncap them a few times and see if that makes them any easier. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop, guys? That's what I feel like I'm doing here. It's, I don't know, maybe a little bit easier the more you do it. I don't know. The, the caps feel a little tight on that. I would just be careful on the new Oros markers if you have a hard time removing caps. The original Alps might be a better fit for you just because of that. But taking a look at the color palette here, because the markers are identical, I mean, the, the marker, the build quality, everything, packaging is very comparable to the first two sets that I reviewed about a month ago. Um, and this color palette is the same as the original Artix 90 set that actually this just came out a few months ago, I think, maybe six months ago. Um, so they've changed your packaging. This is what I actually like these cases quite a bit with a magnetic closure. I wasn't so hot on the ones that had the um, uh, the little buckle on there because they didn't stack my shelves right and they were kind of a pain. I'm not crazy about these carry straps either, um, but as far as like a studio thing, a little easel stand, I like that. Um, I think the newer things are probably better quality, but I that was just handy and easy for me. So I liked it. Stacks on my shelf really easily. I can stack it on its side. You can do that with this bag as well, but um, everyone has their own preferences. Um, so you've got three greens there, almost identical. It's pretty close to that one too. Um, you've got like these three kind of beiges are, these peachy colors are very similar. I mean, you probably go through a lot of those colors if you color a lot of um, white people, if you color a lot of like fairies and mermaids and things like that. Um, these three browns are very similar. Um, I feel like you've got a little bit more variety in the darker tones, skin tones. However, you've got a lot more of the lighter 
the lighter skin tones. So lighter colors do go dry quicker because of the higher alcohol con content in them. So that's something to keep in mind too. So it's not a bad thing to have some similar light tones. But I mean, if you look at these greens, very similar. Some of these light blues almost it's 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 almost hard to tell them apart um the gray selection though is fantastic i really love having a good selection cool grays are my preference if i could only have one set of grays um, i wouldn't get a mix match i would do i would do like a full set value uh, 0.5 through 9 of gray, of cool gray personally i find that i can put that under most everything and it will look all right now if i have my my druthers and i have all the grays then i would use warm grays under warm colors and i would use cool grays under cool colors but um but i find the cool grays is since they're more transparent they they just seem to be more versatile but this has a good selection of cool grays and warm grays it's got um it's got a couple of green grays and blue grays i gotta be honest i've never found a lot of use for that. Maybe if you do a lot of chrome and metallic things, that might be real handy. Uh, for me, I haven't found a, a lot of use for it, but I don't do markers primarily. Um, so different artists will have different different needs. And uh, that's what I want you to see in the color palette here is that you have a lot of similar colors, but it's basically filling in the gaps from the original, the 80 set. So um, I like that they release the sets so that you don't get double duplicates because a lot of times what happens is a company comes out with a set of 24 or 12 and you buy that and you'll go, oh, I love this, I want to get the bigger set. And then you have all of those colors duplicated in the larger set. That was kind of the, um, the way a lot of companies used to release products. And I think it was Spectrum Noir started releasing in like 24 packs, like of pencils and markers, and then they wouldn't repeat the next pack would be all different colors and you'd build up your collection that way over time and i like that because you can do that in a budget it, within your budget a little bit better i think um so if you know you want a large range of markers you might want to consider the the Artix brand whether you like the bullet or you like the brush better they both have chisel tips you might want to consider this because you can spend 45 dollars if it's the the um the bullet tip or you can spend like uh, 80 bucks if it's the brush tip and then you can buy the next set, you know, once you've saved up the money again, rather than saving up longer to get a larger set or, um, you know, buying a smaller set and then getting a bunch of duplicates when you buy a larger set. I hope that makes sense. Um, it's just, you know, there's so many markers available right now that there, I swear, there's a perfect set for everybody out there somewhere. Yeah, you know, you just have to look. Um, but like I said, this is a great add-on if you already have the 80 set and the 36 set, or if you want to try brush markers, or or if you have a basic set from another company that has a lot of mid-tones, like the Ahuhu smaller sets have a lot of mid-tones, um, but not a lot of super darks, not a lot of pastels. So if you had like the Ahuhu 48 or 72 set, adding this on would give you a nice range. Although I think some, well, I don't know if some of those colors would be duplicated. This is on the Shinhan color system. So if you have markers where you've got like wine red as number one and, um, you know, or number four, and you have five is cherry pink, and so on and so forth. You recognize those numbers. If you look at the swatch on the listing on Amazon, you can you can look at those numbers and you can compare with the sets you already have to see if there'd be a lot of duplication. That's what I would recommend, because if you're not going through certain colors, there's no point to have two of those markers. You know what I mean? So I want you to use your resources wisely. I want you to use your money wisely and your time wisely and get the products that are going to work for you. So there's a look at the Artix 90 set. Um, it's, uh, it's nice. When I did this illustration, here I actually I was gonna try I'm like okay I want to do something that I can just do with a 90 set but there was no oranges and there was very few mid-tones so I did have to grab a few colors from I had to grab a couple mid greens from the 80 set and an orange from the 80 set to uh, to make the illustration work um, so like that orange I was just, I was layering vermilion and uh, like a yellow but it just kind of it was it just wasn't perfect and the greens the greens were so dark that were in this set or so light that I just couldn't get those uh, those limey greens in there. And those a lime green, but that lime green is just kind of gray, just like the Copic lime green. But um, yeah, not not great for your first set, but definitely a, a good one if you have a lot of mid-tones already and you need to darken it and you need to lighten it to give you a better range. So there's my consensus on the Artix Oros 90 set of markers. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll help you if I can, but I will also link to the listing on Amazon so you can see the swatches and the color numbers and all that jazz uh, to help you make your decisions. Oh, by the way, when I use these, I actually had these in front of me and I did really like that. I really liked having my markers at an angle. It was very easy to see what I had 
and um, on those those crazy little those crazy little stands. I don't know if I can flip it and show you those stands like that. I'm gonna zoom out. Maybe that will help. Um, I found this very enjoyable and easy because I I mean I can get kind of a headache if I color too long. My eyes get tired. Oops! I just took this one out of its stand. Um, you gotta make sure it gets all the way into those little those little grooves. Um, so I can get kind of like uh, almost nauseous if I'm drawing and I'm like constantly like I got a bag of markers open and I'm constantly looking for my work to over there to where my markers are back and forth. That can make me feel a little sick. Um, but having these like I would say probably about two feet so, so off my mat so maybe 18 inches to two feet in front of me was in, in my sketchbook right here it was so comfortable to work with those um, with those little risers so and their uh, their box for their Arctic Alp markers their originals that have the bullet and the chisel also have stands built into their cases like that so clearly the person that came up with the uh, display stands for this is an artist probably somebody <laughs> probably somebody who's middle-aged who has the uh, focusing issues that uh, that we do but it's it's, it's, if it can make you draw comfortably for longer, that's also a plus. So I really do like this feature of having these stands here. Um, and uh, and I like the I like this bag, the bag for this much more over the bag for the other the other markers. Definitely, I could put these right in the bag, and I'll do that right now. Put these right in the bag, and I don't have to take them out. I'm not going to spill them, and I can access them. So if I don't want to have them on their stands. Which, I don't know, after doing a full illustration with those in their stands, I think I will be taking the extra like 45 seconds to take this case out of the bag and put them on their stands because um, it was so comfortable to use them use them to draw. Uh, but there you have it. There's storage space in here for the stands. I actually took the stands from another, <laughs> from the 80 set, I think. Um, yeah, I recommend it, but not for your first set. Definitely for a supplemental, supplemental set. And um, yeah, good products. I haven't had anything from Artix that I wouldn't recommend, honestly. Their, their stuff is nice. I like it. Good quality, good people. All right, that's it. It's a pretty bag. It reminds me of like my homemade chicken feed bag that I made once on my channel with that same material. I want to try to alter the old Artix bag from the 80 set so it will open like this. So I might have to trim it and then like try to sew a little trim or duct tape. I'll use duct tape, but who are we kidding here? And try to make it so it will open like this because I do like, because um, I can set this on my shelf on its side so that both ends of the marker stay inked and that would make it so much e easier. I wasn't even going to use the bag for the markers. I stuck it in with my random uh, crafty bags storage. So I'm going to try that. If I if I do and you guys are interested in seeing it, let me know. I can post it on Instagram or on my blog or something. But uh, there you have it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy crafting.